It's official, MATLAB finally has a dark mode. This comes as a part of MathWorks initiative to build an entirely new MATLAB IDE to enhance the user experience. In most programming IDEs and software suites in today's modern era, dark mode is pretty much a standard. So I reached out to MATLAB to better understand what's going on behind the scenes in this new desktop. As it turns out, one of the main reasons this has taken so long is because MATLAB is actually developing two channels in parallel, one being for MATLAB online and the other being for the native MATLAB desktop application. Turns out these are two completely different frameworks, so it's double the work to add all these new features. Online, the new desktop came out in R2022A, and then for the native desktop, it came out in R2023A. Before you do an upgrade to the new desktop, keep in mind there are a few options if you just wanna change your color preferences, which is in a full dark mode, but it's about 80% of the way there. The way I have this set up right now is done simply with the preferences and color section of the IDE. Another option is using MATLAB Schemer, which is a third-party developed add-on. When it comes to installing the new desktop, be sure to first upgrade MATLAB to the newest version. I'm using the R2024A pre-release, and you should get whatever's available for your operating system. The Try New Desktop button should be visible. You can also access the new desktop by going to Add-ons, Get Add-ons, then search for New Desktop and select the New Desktop for MATLAB. Select the Install button and click Install. The new desktop came out in R2023A, which is my first experience with it. Admittedly, it's a beta, it was a bit buggy, and I decided not to use it. Since then, MATLAB has made significant improvements in both performance and bug fixes, making it a viable option. Keep in mind, I've only tried this for Windows OS. I know some Mac and Ubuntu users have experienced issues. When you boot MATLAB back up, you should see the new loading screen with the blue logo, and then it will boot directly into the new desktop, evidenced by the dark mode theme. Upon startup, I also got this nice handy dandy list of new features that you can click on and then learn more about that feature and how it's implemented. Keep in mind, you can always revert back to the old desktop. At the top, there's buttons that say stop new desktop. Go ahead and click that and return. Another approach is to actually provide meaningful, useful feedback to MATLAB and they wanna hear this. In fact, when MATLAB was developing this new desktop in the first place, they included feedback from thousands of users, and a team within MathWorks actually reviews any feedback that you submit. So be sure to update your MATLAB version before you begin to submit feedback. Within the new desktop, you can switch between the two themes. Go to Preferences, then Appearance. In the dropdown, you can select Dark or Light, and then select Apply. You can also go to the color section where you're allowed to then update the different colors for MATLAB syntax highlighting. The new desktop is highly customizable, starting with this left side panel. You can toggle on and off if you want the files and workspace to be shown. You can also switch to go and view the find files feature. You can go to your previous command history, which shows them most recent from the bottom up to some older commands you've run. This is the same if you go to your command window and press the up arrow. It'll actually show you all your most recent commands, and then you can just click enter on one to actually run it in the command window. There's also the add-on manager that you can open up and see what add-ons you have available. And then you can select the three dots and you'll see all the options of what panels are now available. I'm going to add in the debugger, which pops up on the right. And now I've got a visual interface for handling debugging. You can toggle this on and off by clicking the button on the top right. And if you want to get rid of it, hit the three dots and then select Close Debugger Panel. If you click and hold the debugger bar here, you can actually shift it around and move the positioning to different areas on your screen. And now on the left, I can toggle on both the add-ons and debugger together. You can also click and drag these individual panel icons and move them to other sides of the screen. Here I'm throwing my files to the right side of the screen. I'm gonna bring the add-on manager down to the bottom. And now you have panels all over the place. You can even group two panels together by clicking and holding and then putting one on top of the other and it'll make it into a little grouped section where you can toggle both on and off at once. You can experiment with different layouts by selecting the layout dropdown 
I have the two column default right now. You can go back to the three column. This is what I used often in the old desktop where you have the workspace on the right side for all your variables. Again, it's whatever your preferences are. Per usual, you can drag all the different sections and adjust these windows to how big or small that you like them. Once you have something that feels normal, go to the layout dropdown, click save current layout, and give it a name so you can return to it later. Another welcome addition, the figure tool strip. This gives users the ability to do modifications in the user interface rather than writing code. Here you can add titles, labels, Y labels, grid lines, and so forth, and the figure tab. The format tab allows you to update the font, the font size, any fill colors. You can also jump back and forth between light and dark mode themes for your images. And then in the tools section, you can open up this color map editor that I have here on the right. This pairs well with a color bar in the figure tab. And now you can make live modifications to the color map that you want to apply. You can easily reverse that color map and perform other visual modifications of the figure. When completed, you can make this into a replicable function by going to the tool tab and then generate function. This actually creates a MATLAB function that you can then use to repeatedly make the same figure from your data. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. MathWorks continues to hound the fact that this is a beta. They're rolling this out to try to meet users' needs and get a ton of feedback. So please continue to provide that feedback in order to make this product better for all of us. I'm glad to see MATLAB is getting more comfortable experimenting with new features. Separately, MATLAB has also been working to isolate the interpreter from the MATLAB IDE, creating their own MATLAB LSP, or Language Server Protocol. This means you can now use MATLAB in VS Code, Jupyter Notebook, and other programming environments that you're comfortable with. And I'll make a future video on this as well. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think of dark mode. What are the features that are not working for you? What are some things that MATLAB should focus on? They truly wanna hear. And any comments in the section below, I will forward straight to them. Remember to subscribe and support this channel. I appreciate you watching and have a great day.